Tina Satter's reality, which we actually saw um, uh, yesterday. So it's it's a little bit in the rearview mirror for us. Now, this is a film based on a, a real event um, in which, uh, based on a, 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 sorry, I'm just swallowing some orange. <clears throat> it's based on a real event uh, of an NSA um, uh, leaker. Um, so a document leaker, a whistleblower, a whistleblower in, in, the, in the long tradition of, you know, Edward Snowden, um, Chelsea Manning. Yes. A yeah. more minor figure. I hadn't heard a much of more minor figure. So the context is in 2016, a an NSA contractor or employee uh, leaked um, evidence to the Intercept um, that uh, proved uh, Russian meddling in the in Trump's election, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, this woman, um, her name was Reality. Reality winner. Lee winner. Reality she was not. Lay winner. It, ultimately, she was not winning at Reality. Not winning. So what yeah, happened? She yeah. was um, a real name, by the way. Not yeah, that's actually surprisingly a real name. Um, she was uh, not wrapped. She was heavily wrapped on the wrist uh, by kind of like uh, sentencing Made an guidelines. example of five years in the in a, in a slammer for this uh, act. But I think what the film does is it takes what is. Uh, I think it's a, this is a political thriller, but this is where you get a thriller mm -hmm. that speaks to a wider uh, discoursey context, perhaps, mm -hmm. but shrink wraps the entire mm -hmm. uh, package down to a very uh, kind of contained, lean hole. And for for me, uh, this has so far in the festival been actually my I think my favorite film. Mine too. Um, I mean, so w w uh, walk me through. You know, this is uh, I wish to mention this is mm -hmm. Sydney Sweeney, um, actually. You know, of uh, Euphoria um, and White Lotus fame was playing um, reality. But you know, tell me why did this film? Um, how does it tessellate with your reality? Well, <laughs> so um, Sydney Sweeney uh, arrives home. She drives to uh, her house, which is in Georgia, in suburban Georgia, uh, and there are two men uh, waiting for her. Um, it turns out they are working for the FBI. Uh, they are very friendly, uh, but there is a, an, a, a kind of unspoken caution and tension that rears its head uh, in moments where she tries to get a bit too close to them. Uh, they want to look at her phone. They have, a, they have, a, they have to announce that they have these warrants to search um, uh, her property and her car and her phone. Um, and uh, But they manage broadly to um to keep the uh keep the interaction in a f in a fairly so like sort of uh friendly uh good cop space um in the initial phase of what becomes an interrogation well, the, yeah the, the 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 power dynamic is always present but it it sort of seethes around Absolutely. this 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 veneer of of barely held in check uh, pleasantry and 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 this is this is a, a, a this is a, i guess a, a classic trope of the of the um you know of any interrogation drama um you know in, in any good tv show but it it it, it has a, even though it's based on a play it has a very cinematic build up it in the way that these these unknowns pass through the cinematic space and the way that these dramatic ironies or these you know well, they're not really dramatic ironies because we don't really know unless you've read up on the story we don't really quite know what's going on we don't know how much she knows mm. about what they're going to tell yeah, her, her and her this innocence. thing unfolds yeah. and it mostly takes place in one room mm. um so again like weirdly would be theatrical there are certain aspects of the way it's made uh so so it starts off i'll just say it's announced that this is all a transcript from a real recording and I, i'm afraid to say uh judging by films like manadrome which we saw at the festival which we spoke about just now um uh i'm afraid to say taking your screenplay from an actual verbatim <laughs> recording <laughs> seems to be a more viable artistic route for mm -hmm. hollywood than anything a screenwriter well, seems lends, to be able to come up with. It lends a, 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 it lends a, lends a naturalism. I mean, we're, we're I, there might be di divergences, but I, I'm led to believe that it's almost a, a, a blow for blow exact. That's what it says on the screen. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, a recording was about 90 minutes. And you long. hear little bits of the recording dotted in and out. I thought mm. for a moment it was going to be an experimental project where they were going to mouth along to this horrible recording. It was going to be dubbed over. <laughs> yeah, the top. yeah. I think the yeah. first there was like a one little bit where you see the FBI actors. Um, so mouth along to the actual recording, and then it transitions and into then it transitions diegetic into the acting. Uh, I think because it's, it's it's interesting how uh, 
it the we know we know the interrogation as a trope of of prestige television of of yeah. of, of, of classic hollywood noir um I think it's a well-worn, a well-trodden um, uh, uh, genre. But I think what's really interesting about this, what I really liked about it, was the the procedural nature of this. We see this this kind of police interrogation unfolding in all its banality. And I think I, I was really afterwards hesitant to use these words, but the the kind of unfortunate kind of formulation that comes to your lips is a kind of you know, uh, uh, and banality of evil. Um, Hannah Arendt, uh, so, when yeah. she interviewed Eichmann about Eichmann, the, yeah, yeah, so the Eichmann trial. Um, and I think there is a a, a real, because often we see this, this uh, when we encounter power in the government in Hollywood films, it's often in a kind of uh, soft projection of American power and exceptionalism. So we see the cop side and what we get is, we rarely see the victim side, um, and we see these kind of Thomas Villeneuve style things where uh, sorry the victim the um the uh, the, the, the yeah the the, the, the alleged the perpetrator alleged perpetrator so what we see with uh like this Thomas Villeneuve style uh kind of spec ops cinema is a, a sleek fearful terrifying shock and awe of black cars and uh suited you know kind of uh, camoed up uh anonymous police officers and things like that uh, that slickness is washed away here with this kind of drab, incredible drabness. Uh, so it, all these policemen are, are kitted out in these in their Oakleys and their and their chinos, and they've got these disgusting like canvas belts. And mm -hmm. the camera, what often happens is you see these bodies slowly accumulating in this space in a house, interrupting the lens, mm -hmm. um, kind of squeezing together inside her small, quite shabby little home. Um, and you get these legs and crotches with these kind of dick prints on them because their trousers are too tight or ill-fitting or they're too fat. These kind of bulky, fat, you know, placid FBI men in uh, shirts that don't really fit. So there's this, there's this bodily... Uh, uh, and you're able to speculate about what these, what these bodies are capable mm. of. Like, you know that they are... Are, they are armed or you know they are ready to they're capable at any moment to to turn on the tap of that exactly and there are these yeah. and there are these there are these certain regulations they have to follow mm. um such as are you, you aware know, they, we're doing this yeah, are you happy yeah. yeah can you confirm blah, blah, blah. and they and they won't they won't let her be in the room with only one officer it has to be two so even though they're being really friendly and asking mm. her these like casual questions in between the less casual questions mm -hmm. they're still having to maintain certain standards uh, of security because they are mm. because they are dealing with this massive thing and we're not quite aware yet what that massive thing is even if you watch it with the full knowledge of the case i think you'll still feel this extraordinary tension and it, it is like a classic almost like a noir it's like a classic hollywood thriller and, it, and it's a procedural and it's it's just um yeah and it, and and apart from a few strange sort of gitchy glimmicks or kind of news clips that sometimes work sometimes don't um, it, it, it's yeah, a it, basically a very restrained exercise compared mm -hmm. with most films. It injects the kind of bits of lip filler um, here and there, you know, about the context of it. It kind of reenacts her at her desk, you know, and she explains how she hid the printed out this email and hid it in a kind of pantyhose. Uh, it shows her kind of doing that at her desk, and it's Americans, eh? Yeah, Americans. Eh? It's like, well, uh, I didn't. We didn't need to snap to that because uh, observing her face and and what the camera does is it's often showing her in this this. Um, this kind of head and shoulders um, shot is quite close, and often mm -hmm. the camera's very, very slowly pushing in, like a kind of mm. slow, like the the, four, the 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 field of power collapsing, yeah. you know, circling around her and tightening. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to cut to those uh, those uh, elements from the outside, I suppose. So every for that, you know, in that sense, it kind of it's better to keep us in the room with her. Um, yeah. I think that was that was and that was one of my you know critiques maybe, but it's uh, it's so it's so minor it does not spoil the broth at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I, I was so awed by the the way in which it, it generated tension exciting. that I that, that that was that was bigger than the slight bristling I had with some yeah. of the the things that make it look a bit like a Vice documentary. But um, mm. yeah, hats off to uh, Tina, Tina Satter, Satter, who is who is. Primarily a stage director, and this was a stage play first. Her stage play, yeah, she and she's trans, not a, an activist filmmaker, film. as far as I can tell. I mean, she may be sort of somewhat sympathetic with. I mean, you know, it's hard not to be sympathetic with the protagonist, given the you know the right. sort of. But it does make uh, the, the interesting but thing out is it, it makes um, talking about kind of you know responsibility with uh, the the cult and um, Adrian Brody's character in um, 
Manager him. Manager him, but it almost makes uh, 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 the intercept out to be uh, predatory. Or irresponsible. irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't yeah. sort of. It, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't balance the books either. But it does sort of allow for you to have some doubt, a nuanced view on this crazy mm. situation that we all lived through about five or six years ago, where Trump had been elected and there was this huge hysteria, which mm. reality winner is caught up in because, of course, James Comey, the FBI director, is, um, was was um, dispatched by Trump. Uh, by Trump. Um, we are. We are. We are taking our time. But I, I think that is, that is so my. I think this film. <coughs> you know, should it distribute widely which uh, you know hopefully it will i think Very it's, likely, it's yeah. absolutely it's, it's it's a thrilling tight 90 minutes it's, and the breakout it's performance from sydney sweeney a really re- re- huge breakout pro- i mean it's, it's also just it's really exciting which is mm-hmm. you know it's it's, it's the political thriller is uh you know you it, it, it's it's the quality of a gene hackman in the 70s or something it's got this amazing uh tautness to it and this 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 mm. barely contained energy it's it's amazing there were two films i thought of during it um Alan Clark, um, and uh, well, he did an interrogation project uh, called uh, oh God, what was it called Psycho something. Anyway, um, and uh, but he 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 specialised in the procedural. A lot of his films have um, made in Britain, for instance, has an amazing kind of interrogation scene, um, and The Trial by Orson Welles, which is an amazing kind of dream sequence film. Not explicitly, but it it, it definitely. Uh, evokes a that. ratcheting of paranoia exactly yeah. um which uh which yeah which, which i think um it does that thing that reality um does so well of, of conjuring into being a feeling uh through like procedures and actions um that we can see very clearly uh and then we through that we can feel something else even clearer <laughs>